Hello. Four men are under arrest tonight after armed police were called to a high school in Suffolk. The big police operations swung into action late this morning when a black BMW car crashed near Chantry High School in Ipswich. A security cordon was set up around the school and pupils were kept in their classrooms while a team of police searched the area. A number of weapons were recovered from the scene. More than a thousand pupils and a hundred staff kept in school for their own safety. They anxiously tried to see what was happening outside. The police turned up in force following a call to say someone was seen with a gun outside the school. Parents gathered for news at the school gates. I just want to know what's going on and whatnot. Jane Stewart was able to speak to her 16-year-old daughter, Gabrielle, still inside the school. As long as you lot are all all right, it's the main thing. She first knew of the problem when her daughter sent this text. Oh my God, there's a person with a gun outside school, apparently. Oh my God. <laughs> And then just trying to find out what was going on, whether it was on the news or anything like that, and just find out and come straight up here. Um, I got text messages from the school saying that incident happened outside the school and the children would be released early, so I didn't know until actually what happened when I come up the road and someone said there's a shooting going on. So I sort of panicked and ran up here. It all started with a crash outside the school. This vehicle left the road. Police say several men were seen to get out of the car. They were joined by another group of men, one was seen with a handgun. Three hours later, pupils were slowly released from school. We were in maths and we were just told to like stay where we were, not allowed to leave the block. And we'd been in there for like two and a half hours. It's horrible. No one knew what to do. We were like crying, most of us. They're so scary. Like never been in this sort of situation before. Tonight, Suffolk Police say four men, three from Ipswich and one from London, have been arrested on suspicion of possessing a firearm. They're waiting to be questioned. Officers say they're relieved that no one was injured today. Debbie Tubby, BBC Le Keist, Ipswich. Well, when I spoke to the head teacher, Andrew Fell, late this afternoon, the police were still very busy on the scene. When the crash happened, the school phoned the police, then tried to get on with lessons. Um, the very simple instructions were that it happened during lesson time um, and that I asked all the uh, pupils to stay in lessons and uh, any other adults to support what was going on. Then at around lunchtime we had the advice to keep our young people inside until the police advised us that they were sure that the situation had been cordoned off. Um, and when we were confident that the situation was, was under control from the police, we, we then let children go home a little bit early. Uh, I know that you sent texts to parents, but some of your pupils we... were sending texts as well. Uh, did you have well, any urgent phone calls from parents? We, um, some parents contacted us, and, and the grapevine was, was alive and well, but, um, and, and some of the parents had, had contacted us, and some of the, our pupils had contacted their mums and dads. Um, but we, we sent out texts uh, reassuring the parents that everything was under control. Um, we had a few parents come to the gate and, and we, we um, ushered them in and, and made sure that they, they knew what was going on. Um, and, and, and again, I would say that the parents that contacted us were very um, appreciative of, of, of the way we handled the situation. Uh, were there any of your younger children who became very nervous and frightened about what was going on? Not really. I think, um, as I say, our, our staff supported the young people um, incredibly well. I mean, clearly um, it's distressing and when there's uncertainty about what's going on outside, but um, we know our young people very well and they were looked after and, and reassured. It must be very worrying for them to see so many police around outside. Will you be offering counselling or anything like that to them? Well, um, clearly um, what we will be doing tomorrow and, and for the next few days is um, looking after our children, reassuring our, our children. Um, there are plenty of professional people within the staff um, with those sorts of skills and, and we'll be offering the support that they need. Uh, and tomorrow the school will be open as usual and are you expecting all of the children to come to school? Absolutely. Normal school day. Um, GCSEs um, are starting. We've had exams today, so very, very important time for us, and um, we, we remain completely focused on achieving the very best for our young people. Mr Fell, thank you very much for being with us. OK, you're welcome. The country's immigration laws were described as bureaucratic twaddle today after a young man who grew up in Northampton was told he wasn't British. 
Sean Wentz was born in London before moving to Northampton as a boy. The wrangle over his citizenship was triggered by his application for a passport. To celebrate his 24th birthday, Sean Wentz and his girlfriend decided to take time off work and go to Mallorca. The holiday they booked was to be the first trip abroad for either of them. But when Sean applied for a passport, he was in for a shock. His mother came here from Jamaica when she was eight. And although she's now a naturalised Briton, she wasn't when Sean was born. I work here, I've been here all my life, never left the UK. The Home Office basically said that I was an immigrant. <laughs> um, politely, they, they said, they, that's what they said, um, which, which hurt me a little, it upset me. It makes me feel like I've been a bit betrayed by my, my, my country. Um, I feel um, annoyed. <laughs> After being shuttled for weeks between passport office and the home office, he's now been told that he must pay £735 to take a citizenship test, which he has to pass before he can have a passport. This is exactly the sort of case that brings the system into disrepute. Uh, we have a situation in this country at the moment, as we all know, where there are thousands of illegal migrants in the UK, and yet our immigration authorities are pursuing this young man, uh, who clearly has fallen through a gap in the system. I think it's bureaucratic twaddle, and I'm going to write to the Home Secretary about it. £735 pounds is a lot of money, and I'm, I'm not exactly rich, so I, I can't afford it, and then afford to pay for another holiday. It's bang out of order. So I'm going to file it all the way. Even if the authorities relent, it's unlikely he'll get his passport in time for the holiday at the end of the month. All the couple are now preparing to wave goodbye to is the £800 pounds it costs to book. John Cranston, BBC Look East. Well, I can tell you that we've just spoken to Thompson Holidays and they've told us that Sean and Danielle can rebook their holiday once the passport problem's sorted out, so they shouldn't be out of pocket. Still to come in Look East.